praise God. Out of that. Don't be caught without your sword. Amen. It's not a good idea to get out into the battle if you don't have the sword. All right. Turn with me to 2 Peter chapter 1. And when you got it, say, I got it. Hallelujah. 2 Peter chapter 1. Number 1. Y'all having trouble finding it? Got it. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Look at this. His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to your virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity or love. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to take a text from a portion of verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Hallelujah. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. All right. Put your Bibles down. Let's just lift our hands and ask the Lord to help us here tonight. My God, I realize tonight without you, I can do nothing, Lord. God, I'm asking that you would move into this house right now, God. Allow your spirit just to walk the aisles of this place, God. Help us, Lord, to follow your spirit. Let us be led by the Holy Ghost tonight, God. We'll give you all the glory, the honor, the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. Give me my hand clap of praise. I love you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Amen. You can be seated. I want to just preach for a little bit tonight from this thought. God always keeps his promises. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20 said, For all, everybody say all. All. That's every one of them. Amen. That's all of them. That's inclusive. Everything of God in him are yea and in him amen. Unto the glory of God by us. Amen. I want us to understand tonight that God is a promise keeper. Hallelujah. Amen. There's folks in the world that will tell you stuff and then they don't do it. Amen. They'll give you promises. And uh, one of my biggest pet peeves is folks that tell me I'll call you and they're under call. Amen. And I dealt with that a lot when I was in the business with Lowe's over here over the last several months. And uh, I, I, you know, I, I just don't like that kind of stuff. I like somebody that will keep their promises. Amen. But we're living in a world where promise really doesn't matter to folks anymore. Amen. But it matters to God. Hallelujah. Amen. God is uh, is one who, when He gives you a promise, you can count on it happening, Brother Rob. Amen. If he's ever told you anything, it's going to happen. Hallelujah. Amen. I can promise you that. If he's ever given you a word, it's going to come to pass. Amen. 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 I, I know uh, Brother Bourne was here a while back, and, uh, of course, Brother Bourne has been known because uh, he, he, he's told people before, you know, God said, get your house in order, you're going to die. Amen. He's, he's walked right up to people and just said, hey, God just spoke to me and said, you know, you need to get your act together because this time next week, somebody's going to be smelling funeral flowers and it won't be you. Amen. And sure enough, it happened, just like he said. 
you got to understand, amen, God makes promises to us. He keeps his promises. And I don't care how good they are or how bad they are in, in our nature, amen, God always is faithful. Hebrews 11, chapter 11, verse 8, and I, we always talk about the Hebrews 11 being a faith chapter or the hall of faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing where he went. Now you think about this. You got a good home. Amen. You got everything going your way. And God says, it's time to move. <laughs> it's time to get up and go. Now, I know of a missionary that's happened to several years ago. We, we, I was listening to a missionary, and he said that he, uh, got, he had a really good job, had a really good home, beautiful home, and uh, everything. They were just working, just having a good time. They were going to church. They were preaching a lot. And he said that the Lord spoke to him and said he wanted him to be a missionary. He's like, okay, God. And uh, in just a matter of a few months' time, everything began to just roll forward on that, on that calling. And so he, he had an opportunity to either stay or go. But he made some promises to God in that when God spoke to him, he said, God, I will go if you'll take care of us. Hallelujah. And uh, he said that he went and he sold that brand new home they had. Amen. Walked off from a very good job, several hundred thousand a year the way I understood, and went to a mission field where they barely could make ends meet. Amen. But you know what? God is a God who understands your situation. Hallelujah. He is a God that cares. We, we don't, you know, he doesn't just do that to human beings. We make the sacrifice. God honors that. Hallelujah. Amen. He, he honors that sacrifice you make. And he doesn't forget. I said here a while back, God keeps good records. Amen. So by faith, Abraham, when he was called out to go into a place where he should have to receive for an inheritance, obeyed and went out. He didn't even know where he was going. Hallelujah. All he had was that God was telling him, I'm going to take care of you. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and uh, So he, he loaded up everybody. Amen. Loaded up his servants, loaded up all of his animals, got them all situated, and they headed out. Hallelujah. Amen. He didn't know where he was going. All he knew was that he was going in God's will. That's the number one thing in our lives is, is we need to know that we're in the center of God's will at all times. Hallelujah. Amen. Because when you're in the center of God's will, you're at a place where the promises can come to pass. Hallelujah. It's when you move off center that God's promises are, are null and void in your life. Amen. All right. So he obeyed and he went out. Hallelujah. Amen. He didn't know, but God had spoken to him and said, I'm going to give you this place when I take you to it. It's going to become your inheritance. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I love the fact that God makes promises before we get to the destination. Yeah, right. Hallelujah. I understand, and I, you know, it, it's kind of hard. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. Right. Too many of us today are walking by sight, not by faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Several years ago, I preached a message. Uh, seeing is believing, but believing ain't necessarily seeing. Amen. Hallelujah. Believing and trusting, amen, is believing that God's going to do what he said he'll do when he gives you a word. Amen. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles or tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Look at this. For he looked for a city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself conceived, or received strength to conceive seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past age, I'd say so, because she judged him faithful, what? Who had promised. Hallelujah. You understand, he is faithful. Amen. The Bible said he's just and he's faithful. Amen. To do that which he said he will do. And if he's ever said something to you, it's going to come to pass. Hallelujah. Amen. I remember my dad, of course, was a, was a man of God. And uh, 
it wasn't, you know, I got to walk and live with a prophet of God and, and life would get exciting sometimes. You know, uh, he would tell, come in there and tell my mom, all right, get, get ready, we're fixing to hit the Mississippi. Of course, mom, would, she would want to do what God wanted, but at the same time, she was like, you know, a little more earthy. <laughs> and so she would be like, wait a minute, we got to do this, this, and this, and this. I got to get packed. We got to, you know, we, you need to clean the car. We need to do this. We need to do that. And uh, he would say, now, I'm telling you, God spoke for me. We need to leave this afternoon. And so sure enough, it didn't matter what happened, what else happened. We would roll out of the driveway that afternoon. And the reason was because, amen, there was a time schedule that God had set. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know. I, I'm going to have to teach on this sometime, on the timing of God. Amen. We don't understand. His time is different from our time. Amen. We operate on 24-hour days, seven-day weeks, 365 and a four-day years. And uh, God doesn't operate that way. you got to remember, he's timeless. He lives in a place where there is no time. He's in eternity. He was before time began. He will be after time is done. Hallelujah. Amen. He is timeless. So when God tells you he's going to do something, you can mark it down as going to happen, but it's going to be in his time period. Hallelujah. And so uh, when my dad would tell my mom, it would be like we would, we would drive to Mississippi or wherever we were going to preach and and as soon as we got there, the time would be so precise. It was unbelievable. Amen. The things that I saw God do because the timing was exactly the way God had said it would be. I remember several years ago, my dad, we were preaching in Winsboro, Louisiana. And there was a young man that was there that um, he had just lost his job about nine months before then. He had lost his job and he had looked and looked and looked and looked and put in application after application after application and nothing happened. He could not find a job. And uh, my dad did not know that, of course. My dad just was a man of God. He didn't go into churches and say, all right, preacher, tell me all about your church. He never did that. Amen. A guy that does that, I don't have much confidence in him. Hallelujah. Amen. He needs to hear from God. He needs to know. Amen. That's why when we have evangelists come around, I don't tell them anything about you guys. I want God to speak to them about you. Amen. And so he, 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 my dad just walked up to him in the service one night and he said, God just spoke to me and he said, you're fixing to a, a build a new home. Well, I don't even have a job. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, I'm telling you, you're fixing to get a new home just in the next few months. And then he turned around and walked off. Well, the guy was kind of bump puzzled. He didn't even have a job. How's this going to happen? But God's timing is always perfect. And so a little later on, my dad, in the course of the service, called the man up. And he stood there in the front. My dad began to give him the word. He said, God just spoke to me and said, you're out of a job, but God's fixing to give you a job that's going to be better than any job you've ever had. He's going to make you the head and not the tail. And when he does that, there's going to be an increase to such a degree you're going to be able to build a house and pay for it. And not worry about it. Hallelujah. Amen. We were gone. For about three months before we came back, the preacher called us and told my dad, said, I want you to come preach for me this weekend. And so we went up there to Winsboro, Louisiana, and, and my dad got in there to, to preach. And that young man said, I want to testify. And so the pastor had him come up to testify. And he said, Brother Driscoll did not know. And I didn't have a clue. He said, but the next day after he said that, I got a call. Hallelujah. From a guy I hadn't even put in an application with. He said he found out I was out of work and he called me and said, I've got a job for you if you're interested. And he said he went up there and the guy put him immediately into a supervisory position making about three times what he had been making. And he said, guess what, Brother Driscoll, we just signed the contract on our new home. We're just fixing to start building it now. Hallelujah. Tell me that's the way God works. Amen. Mark 9 and 23, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Right. Everybody say all things. all things. Now does that mean he only does some things? No. no. That, that word says all things. Amen. That, that is everything. All 
things are possible to them that what believe it. Hallelujah. We have to have the faith. We have to believe. The Bible says he that cometh unto God must first believe. You can't even know who God is if you don't believe in him. Amen. First, you got to believe that he is. Hallelujah. Second, you believe that he is what? You believe that he is what? A rewarder. Everybody say a rewarder. All right, so the second thing is you don't just believe, but you believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently. Now, here's where the problem comes in. This is the pinch, okay? We don't diligently seek him. Hallelujah. I was raised in an era of time. Amen. And, and I saw many, many miracle signs and wonders. I've seen a lot of things happen in the church. I've seen a lot of miracles happen in the church. But guess what? It was because we were living in a time period there was prayer, diligent prayer going on. We're living in a day and age that's microwave fast. Hello. And we want it to happen, but we don't want to get into the diligent prayer. The Bible said the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth little, much. Amen. If you want God to do something for you, then you've got to spend time with him. Oh, it's just that simple. Amen. I want God to do some great things in my life. But you know what? God said, I'll do them, but I want you to spend more time with me. Hallelujah. I want you to take time out of your schedule. I know you're busy, you know, but I want you to take time out of your schedule and come and visit with me. Come and spend a little time with me so that I can do what I want to do in your life and do for you. I can't do anything for you if you don't ever talk to me. First off, how's he going to know what you need? He does know what you need already. Obviously, he knows what you have need of. But he's not going to give it to you just out of the blue and not without you talking to him. Amen. So, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe it. Now, Mark 11, 24. Therefore, I say unto you, whatsoever things ye desire when ye pray. Notice, every one of these scriptures is tied together with prayer. Hallelujah. God is looking for folks that will be faithful to him. He's going to be faithful to you. Amen. He is a faithful God. We've already discussed that in the first part of this message tonight. We've already talked about his faithfulness to us. Amen. He is faithful. Amen. He will answer you, but he expects you to be faithful to him. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, you know, does faithfulness just consist of being a prayer, a prayer? Yeah, well, it does. That's a big portion of it. If I'm married to uh, Sister Driscoll, and I am, amen, 38 years of, of wedded bliss, amen, hallelujah. And uh, in 38 years' time, if I just all of a sudden just quit talking to her, it probably wouldn't have been 38 years' worth, <laughs> hallelujah. If I just said, you know what, I like talking to the dog better, yeah, <laughs> that probably wouldn't have went over real good. Amen. Probably would have went over like a lead balloon. But a lot of folks that spend more time with their animals than they do with God. Jesus. <laughs> Amen. A lot of folks just talk to, to everybody else, but they don't talk to God. Yeah. The only time God hears from some folks is when they're getting in a car wreck. Hallelujah. It's the truth. He doesn't hear from them until they're getting into a serious situation and all of a sudden it's, oh God, help me! <laughs> it's the only time he's ever heard from them, really. Amen. But look at what he said. Whatsoever things you desire when ye pray. Wow. Believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible also said, where two agree is touching anything in my name, believing it shall be done. I remember uh, several years ago, I was in, in a hospital uh, praying for a guy in our church. I was on my way down the elevator, and uh, an elderly lady got on with her on the second floor, or third floor somewhere up in there. She got on the elevator with me, heard her son pushed her on there in a wheelchair. And uh, 
I was dressed like a preacher. I was just in blue jeans and old shirt. Smelt bad and uh, been out cooking all day and 